The world of Peter Clark in his studio is to see artistry in action. It began with dog portraits, their personalities perfectly captured. Then, as demand grew for this paperwork genius, so his repertoire widened. Here, a dress shows his attention to intricacy and excellence. Well, this whole piece, with the shapes and the to different tones of, of the colour blue, I think are balancing well now. Lovely images come in. Um, but little things jump out, like this was a record sleeve with perfect lines for a flower frock. This was, um, I think it was a cover from a magazine on Kleinborn Opera, but the, so, so rich. It's a mix of music covers, which are all these bits of packets from tights, old-fashioned magazines, which are bits cut up, uh, but I'm not going to tell you how it's done. <laughs> Peter's works are peppered with wit and humour. There's things like this dancing girl coming out of... Is that the Louvre? As well as dexterity of form and content. I hope the humour does come through from the papers I use and where they're placed. He has an intuitive ability to pick the perfect image for his storylines. I don't like it to be anal and controlled at all. Although I would like to balance some pieces of it are tightly done. But others, be, others should be just like you found on the, in the bin, really. Almost on ground, you know. This element of chance runs side by side with a library-like store of source material. All that's planned is that in this was a dress that would be blue. That's it. Then I rely on what to find. Today it's Kempton. Peter's hunter-gatherer instincts are at the forefront when searching for material. This antiques market near London is a UK favourite. It takes a while to get your eye in, but um that's the whole point of these things, it's all surprise. You never know what you're going to come up against. And it's great. I know a few people. There are some people that actually get stuff specially for me. How much the magazines, please? Three. Thank you. There is success on the horizon and purchases made. Are these yours? Yes. Three inch. Yeah. Three, three inch. Could I take those three, please? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Only after sifting through is Peter satisfied to make a transaction, or several. In this case, it's music. I like. I love these colours. I'm going, oh, you're I, going I, more for colour, aren't you? Yeah, and okay. and and little patterns, like the this spatter and. Oh, okay. Music Deal accomplished its back to the studio, where the effects of clever shopping for content and texture are clear. The, the bodice I, I'm pleased with. I was so lucky to find two of these clefts, but they work very well, I think, in, into the strap. That's not an air hostess, they're fashion drawings. They're from... Um, uh, let me see if I've got mag They're from old French magazines. Look at this. This is L from 1941. Isn't that fantastic? But they're, uh, they're taken from, you know, the paper's so lovely, so put, such poor quality, so it's nice manipulate, and the printings, the, the blue is amazing but I've put it together because of the blue as, as a French piece, as in Fashion Paris, all that. So I used a lot of, I chose a lot of French stuff. We do go to um, flea markets in France, 
Paris as well, and in France, most years. France, New York, Zagreb, Japan, India and China are just some of the places Peter finds source material. Likewise, the buyers of his work are transglobal. His collectors are discerning in the knowledge that they have something special. Many ask for bespoke pieces. Sonny is a dearly loved cockapoo, and Peter's interpretation of this commission incorporated the family's homes both in London and Greenwich, Connecticut. Sometimes he includes materials provided by clients, but in every case he takes pride in getting to know their story. It was a commission of a shark and its son. Basically, the guy is Australian and he has a company in Vietnam and to cover all those things. I wanted to look quite fierce. So I used lighthouses and uh, missiles for the teeth. Around the back of the mouth, front, front of the face is a map of the rocks area of Sydney. Then the rest are from lovely colored pictures from the Australian Women's Weekly which was great colour printing. I'd like them to find it amusing and inspiring, hopefully. I do like the fact that it sells everywhere around the world. Yeah, I love it. The more the better. <laughs> Peter's draftsmanship is at the heart of his creations, understandable given his background in graphic design, illustration and animation. It's, an, it's quite an interest, interesting aspect of what I do is because uh, that might be the only piece of paper you, you'll ever see that's in a, a piece of work, you know, because they don't print that any, anymore. Or certainly not in the type of paper that I use. The cleverness of depth in the pieces creates 3D effects, which adds in vitality to the subject matter. Because within the box, I think there's something like six centimetres airspace. So I, I'm allowed up to six centimetres vertical paper. I like to balance the rough folds on this one different thicknesses. Peter's world is eclectic, his house oozes personality and his work allows his audience to be transported elsewhere with humour, honesty and an unrivalled ingenuity with printed material. No, I mean thing is that I've, I've all my life I've collected uh, paper things you know from bubble gum as a kid and cigarette packs cigarette cards, <coughs> sweet wrappers. I've always had an interest in graphic papers and the fact that now I can put them together and make other objects is just a massive plus really. And I kind of like to think he's build, been building all my life really. Okay, I'm still interested in things from then slightly different way but it's there. <laughs>